Dzień dobry Państwu. Uh, for some important reason, this discussion will be in English. And this, well, it's no longer a foreign language, so uh, it seems to be quite natural. Especially that uh, we are using many English words, talking about university business cooperation, science and business relations, and so on. My name is Tadeusz Luty, and uh, uh, in the booklet about this uh, meeting, you can find too extensive bio. Uh, this is really quite long, and it was not my intention to put all details of my life into the book. But nevertheless, uh, it's good. And I thank organizers that they published this because I can show my wife, you know, how was my professional life going through. There was not many occasion, of course, for this. Now, let me concentrate on the topic of the panel. Well, the topic actually is the question, how to build a successful collaboration between science and business? Uh, every of you, the uh, participants may probably answer this question in many different ways, depending on your experience, depending on some reflections, even from uh, today's talks. And the organizers were lucky to ask and they are successful in the sense that people, colleagues, who have been invited to participate in this panel accepted this invitation. So we will hear some remarks on this topic from the prestigious panelists. As you know, uh, we have a guest from the Polish Academy of uh, sciences, Professor Elżbieta Frunskowiec. Welcome. We are lucky to have a guest from Israel. And uh, I have to be correct in the name, so please allow me to. Madame, Sa excuse me. It's easier. Sarai Kemp. Um, uh, she is from the Business Development and Threadline Agtech or Agtech from Israel, of course. Uh, the kind of a gender balance will be provided by our colleague, um, uh, actually two colleagues. Uh, you can see one of them, uh, and I will explain to you what will happen next. Uh, I see too many pages. Uh, Dr. Igor Korchagin, who is uh, director of the research and development in, uh, is it PCC Rokita? PCC Rokita. Uh, We are still expecting Professor Maciej Chorowski, the present director of the National uh, Research and Development uh, Institute Center, who is traveling to us by train, and the train uh, is a little bit late, let's say. But we are expecting him to be here still. I think we will welcome him when he will arrive. And now, 
because the organizer asked us to have this discussion within one hour, then I can sacrifice and I will resign from my introduction. I have prepared introduction, I have two pages prepared. But it is easy to resign for me because I listened to this, the previous talks and I was very lucky to listen to them because every of this talk was actually a kind of a recipe how to develop a successful collaboration between science and, and, and business. And the recipe, recipes were so valuable because they came from experience. What you will hear from my introduction would be purely theoretical. I must confess I don't have experience in the kind of collaboration, but I am interested in this for many, many reasons, passed from my rector's time, but also from the, uh, as, uh, uh, being responsible for this topic in the European University Association. So, you are after introduction made by previous speakers, thanks to all of you, and now we will start with contributions of panelists. Question is clear. How to build a successful collaboration between science and business? And I will ask Professor Franckovic to take the floor, please. So the question is really difficult because as it was told already, businessmen and the scientists, they are persons which are from uh, previous talks. Some of them, they are telling that they have nothing common. Some of them, that they are very, very, they, they must be connection. I was really very much impressed by all these few speakers before in the previous panel. It was really perfect examples where you can Finally, yesterday as well, it was a perfect lecture also from Dr. Brona, where there was examples of business persons and, and scientists. They, we have hearing some examples of persons which were pure professors, uh, quite some of them very fresh, and how they were building this science. But their knowledge was not only from Polish University. Most of them, they were traveling a lot. They, have, they were gaining some knowledge from outside, from America, from Israel, some of them, from Asia, Asia, and of course, Europe as well. So we, are, we have here a lot of good examples that, that okay, one was such that uh, science doesn't need to have education, that you can be very stupid and you can make business. Yeah, okay, it can happen, but extremely rare and really some good luck, you can have it. So we have another guest. So maybe we will have applause to our <laughs> guest. <laughs> Sorry for being late. I promise that we will welcome you when you arrive. <laughs> okay, so just almost on time. So one example was there was you don't need to have education, you can have uh, good luck and to have business. It's extremely rare. We were hearing a lot of exams, they were you, you must have knowledge. You must have experience at, at the, on the background of that, you can really make business. But we have very few examples. We have some examples where we are taking European Union money and you must be very careful how to calculate it. Some person told they are not good. They, they, they prefer to have donations where you after don't need to cal calculate how to make reports. You don't need to have all these administrations. What I saw that there were some few examples where there was some special industry which you can really develop. Because after I will tell you about my small example. We have some example about polymers. I like very much, I am also chemist, so I like that you can make this business because polymers is so wide, so much versatile. It is so easy to, I, I feel such, that you can make a lot of different progress in, in the business. You can invent your knowledge in, in business because polymer chemistry is so rich. Another one was from uh, telescopes, which we were hearing yesterday and today as well. And it's quite exceptional, but if you have good physicists, we, we can do it as well. And it shows that some young scientists can do it. 
We have also exam a very nice one from Agha, Academy of Mining and Metallurgy. How you can make business on the on the research. And a very ex extremely impressed lecture, which was the last one, about how to make business, which was, which was extremely difficult, but he, 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 he did it as well. From my experience, I'm an electrochemist. Now I am uh, working on the, I have only cadence for Polish Academy of Sciences for four years, so one year already passed, only three years remaining. I am still a scientist. And for me, electrochemistry is a very, very important topic. It was told such that you must ask client where your invention is necessary. So finally, all of you are my clients, because I am asking you which kind of applications I can use. For example, I can produce supercapacitor. All of you, you can use it, but I would need some industry, industry for power sources. What we are producing in Poland, we are producing lead acid. This is one which we are using just for starting the car every day. Because even if it is not ecological, power sources, it is very cheap. And finally, economy deciding what is on the market. Lithium ion batteries are the most popular in our telephone, in our, some uh, computer and so on. But we are not able. Just Asia, China, they are better than we. So we have again no chance. We, I am, personally, I can able to produce capacitor which could be used as a boost together with some other energy source. So all of you, you could be some kind of potential client. But how to go with my small model, which I am able to produce in laboratory? In my Poznan University of Technology, CIRIT, it means uh, some kind of uh, innovation and connection. I am, it is, maybe in some universities it's working better, but for, for, for me, they didn't help me simply. I could not do anything with CIRIT, with this kind of uh, innovation center, which is in our university. So still, maybe some niche, some, some part of science can be easily innovated, can be easily introduced into business, but maybe not, not, not so easy with everything. Biotechnology, as we are hearing, sometimes 5, 10, 15 years necessary, but depends, for example, for, for this uh, experience, how to analyze blood from one drop of blood, it was super. It is really exceptional business, which you can make it extremely quick, not waiting uh, many, many uh, days or hours, just only a few minutes you can make analysis. So I would, I would say that innovation also very much depends on the, what you want to do. With, not with everything, you can make uh, connection very easily, collaboration between science and, and business. At least I feel such. For electrochemical power sources, I don't feel that it would be very easy in Poland to do. Even if Premier Morawiecki told, one million cars during a very short time. So for this one million of cars, we need a lot of power sources. We will buy everything ready. I think it is a market. We can do it in Poland, finally. But how? Can you, can you offer a short answer to the question, how to build a successful collaboration? I think today, good examples, which was from our previous speaker. They were showing exactly good examples. Previous speakers during last panel. You must have idea. Well, okay. you, you can dream. Uh, you can, you can uh, fight with the uh, world, or you can just realize your dreams. I understand. To be aggressive yeah. sometimes, to make... Uh, all of the, you, you, all these exams were different. Each one was going different way, but extremely, extremely successful. I understand. The Professor Franskowiak prefers that the best uh, recipe is to take a good example from something which already works. Uh, now, uh, well, may I ask... Uh, uh, Madame Sarah Kemp, for a contribution to the same question, please. So I'll start maybe with uh, describing the challenges as we see it in Israel, and then trying to suggest a solution that we are using it in Israel. I think the challenges, and Professor Lotti, you describe it in the email that you sent us, I think there's a big culture gap between industry and research. Industry is looking, or at least us, we are an investors that are looking for early stage technology. We commercialize it from different research institutes in Israel mainly. We're looking to commercialize as many technologies as we can at a cheaper price and technologies that are market oriented, that are applicable. For the academia, the aim is almost completely different. It's to conduct basic research. And us as a society, we gain from that. And we want the university to continue to do that as a society. But from the industry point of view, it is a challenge. 
Another challenge comes from the researcher point of view. Uh, there's a famous saying, and I'm sure all of the academia people here know it better than I do, is either publish or perish. And from an industry point of view, it's a death row for the company. We need IP before any researcher can publish anything in any publication. And for a researcher, it is an issue. What we try to do in Israel to overcome these gaps, um, two ways of thinking. One is to structure a very good TTO, tech transfer office. Each university and research institute have them. They have very clear guidelines of commercial rights, what you can take, what you get for it, and what you have to pay back to the research institute. And at the same time, the researcher gets incentives. He gets an equity part in the company that is being based on the technology we license from them. He can get ESO options. He can get salary. He can get a, a even consultancy fee. This is an, a, a reward for the researcher to develop his technology first for an a, a applicable a te a technology to be market oriented, even if it's a biotechnology technology that can take 15 years, still it needs to be applicable. And even in that case, we, we the industry, can take the risk and invest. And, and this is one thing. And then if the, the guidelines of the licensing is very clear, like both MIT and Howard Institutes, of course, it's easier for them because they have a very good reputation, but they were able to do it very successfully. In Israel, we are still struggling. For instance, even when you create a company and you license a the technology, then you have maybe new IP created. New IP that was created with the help of the researcher that still belongs to the academia. New IP that was based on the old IP. Who, who owns this IP? It's still a struggle, but if you keep a very strong point of view and guidelines, you can make it happen. We license each year about um, eight technologies. Uh, from different research institutes in medical device and in agriculture technologies and food technologies. So we have new eight companies each year based on technologies we license. It's a struggle. Even when you complete the deal with the TTO and you have a signed agreement, but then you have a company and you need to do the tech transfer, it's still difficult. It, it still has its own challenges, but it's doable. Thank you very, thank you very much. This is the first, actually, a remark uh, concerning how valuable are or can be uh, technology transfer offices. Uh, as most of you know, uh, in Poland, uh, probably in every academic city, if not in every university, there is something like technology transfer office. So, in a sense that we have the same, yes, we have technology transfer offices, quite a lot of them, probably Professor Horowski already know how many of them, but uh, uh, this is n not, that's probably not a guarantee of a success. Um, then you, you, you quite rightly pointed out that the problem of IP is, is very essential. It is essential, yes, and this is much more complicated problem. Now, uh, if I may, uh, and if Professor Horowski already relaxed from train travel, can I ask you for a contribution to, to, to this general question? Okay. Uh, sorry for being late, but I did my best. Pendolino was late. <laughs> I will come back to this. High tech. No, no, it is high tech. It's a big mistake. <laughs> Well, the question is how to fill a gap between science and uh, uh, business. Sometimes we miss science with academia and business with industry, because I think that if we answer where the gap it is, we, could first, we should first locate science and then locate business. Science can be both in academia and in industry, because industry is more and more responsible for good R&D. Academia can be also a good business. We have a big number of private schools, so it is a business that were buffering unemployment in early 90s. So I think that the basic question is how to make a gap between 
new products, innovative products, and the market. Usually, we think that innovations are blocked academy, and the market is created by, 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 by the business. But uh, in my opinion, it's not a full true. <coughs> it's not a fully true. Because it's true that science is financed mostly by academy. So money goes first to universities, institutes. Institutes can be for basic science, can be for applied science. The knowledge is accumulated, sometimes in quite matured prototypes, ideas. The technology development level can be quite high. It can be also very, 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 very low, but, but the proof of concept is there. And sometime, somehow it is completely blocked with its way to the market. So we sometimes think that it should be enough to make a good contact be between the businessman and the professor. And uh, it is not enough. Because, uh, in my opinion, what we are missing in this country is a better market. We must create, via some system of uh, public uh, purchases, better market for different products that can be tested before they go to open market. You have mentioned uh, that Premier Morawiecki, Vice, uh, Vice Pri or Prime Minister Morawiecki has, uh, well, is now responsible to, to, to identify and, and indicate some directions in the country development. And he indicated that uh, it should be possible in this country to produce something like one million of electric cars and uh, to put them on the market. Why one million? Because we have 10 fingers. So it, you calculate 10, 100 million. If, <laughs> so the number is not very important. Maybe it will be 524,000, maybe it will be 2 million, but it is definitely not one prototype, but it is a market. And how we can get to the number? First, we must identify a better market for at least 50, maybe 100, maybe 150, a town which decides, okay, if I want to introduce a car sharing method and rely on electric cars, I create better market, I take a risk, I ordered 150 or 200 cars coming from Polish factories. I am fully aware that they are still prototypes. So I give them time to get rid of all the mistakes, design mistakes, production mistakes. It takes two years and then we can go to real market. Because a number of companies bankrupted or went into insolvency because they decided to go to the market with a prototype. If they took a risk to go to the market in the United States, for example, they were sometimes killed by the cost of service, by the cost of repayment, by the lack of, of, of a good network there. So, in my opinion, what we are doing now is, uh, <coughs> well, the companies are here. R&D is here. It is already accumulated. Maybe it is not very well protected by IP rights, but it is um, a matter of discussion. Technology transfer offices are here. So everything is here, and why it does not, not work? Because we do not have better markets. So the, and why I mentioned Pendonel, you know, because it could have been a perfect better market for some Polish companies if the decision was made the other way around. Instead of transferring abroad several billions of zlotych, one could take a risk and order such a train in Polish industry. And we would have a better market, yes? In this town, we had a tram factory, and on the streets you can see Skodas. So we created a market, but not a better market for our cars, for, 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 for our local products. So I think that <coughs> academia or universities, institutes in Poland have already done their homework, because they have accumulated a lot of science in form of good papers, technology readiness, proof of concepts. The industry has also done its homework because we have small companies, startups, medium-sized companies, big companies. The companies are now creating R&D departments. They are really 
eager and brave enough to go in contact uh, with, with the market. What we lack? Better market. What can create be better market? The state by buying the things that will be bought, but not necessarily supporting our local industry. So, so that would be, I, I'm fully aware that, 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 that I indicated only one, 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 one solution, but uh, I also think that, 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 that in Israel you have, you have a lot of better market because you... But the government is not, the government is not providing like an overall plan saying this is the market we want the industry or the academia to pursue. Yeah. It leaves it open for the industry yeah. to decide. Of course, but at least the, but at least the industry is given the chance. Yes, but I think the government, the way it supports this industry mm -hmm. is by giving grants for early stage innovation, uh, whether it's through the academy and applicative research or to an incubator we belong to. But it, it doesn't um, advise the uh, industry or you know comes to a city and say, Let's prepare a work plan for train or new electricity no, no. cars. No, but, 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 but I think, well, that mm, maybe it's not so easy to translate the idea to, to, to another uh, economy, but, but uh, that I would like to... Uh, for instance, uh, we are now talking uh, that uh, some, some products should be, should be characteristic for Polish industry, like... like uh, uh, unmanned uh, planes, so-called drones, yes. And we have them, we have them in, in, as, as prototypes. So somebody must take a risk to buy them. Um, well, uh, thank you. I, I, I try to uh, summarize uh, this message which Professor Horowski uh, made in his contribution. And as far as I understood, uh, in his opinion, I think the the, 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 let's say, main difficulty or the barrier for uh, successful collaboration between science and, and business is that, and particularly in our environment, in, in our country, uh, there is a lack of the market which will be for, uh, let me say, prototypes or an early stage of a massive production which probably in other countries is already done by industry or by much richer uh, business. Uh, but in our country, yes, I think it is one of the problems indeed. Uh, so uh, we try to identify these barriers in the discussion. And I believe uh, Dr. Kochagin will have another <laughs> recipe for how to how to build a successful collaboration, please. Well, I just wanted to make some reference to this meta, meta market idea. I think uh, the big industry is, uh, I'd say, rather risk adverse. We are not, we're not there to make very big risky, uh, risky uh, decisions. And this idea of beta market is already with the big industry. You know, the industry that can afford this is going through that phase. You can call it scale up, you can call it trials, you can, so, some sort of idea of a, uh, a beta market is already in, in place in some of the industries. Obviously, different industries require different scales of that of that beta uh, market. So, uh, so I, I think we're already there with with some of the industries uh, with this respect. Now, I also wanted to make some uh, uh, remarks about the uh, technology transfer offices. I can I can assure you, I don't get any calls from any technology transfer offices uh, uh, from Poland. No, you know, nothing. Also, today I've been sitting there since 12 o'clock, and two people came. Uh, uh, you know, to ask, you know, what, what, what's going on. So this is a, a bit of a bitter remark uh, um, about the academia and how outreaching it is to, towards the industry. I need to also, to, you know, to be fair, I also need to <laughs> to criticize a little bit the uh, the industry. Now, industry being very risk adverse, very often, and at least it's, it's the case in Poland, uh, I'm not sure, maybe in other countries it looks a different way, but very often, the industry is just trying to, uh, I don't want to say copy the competition, but also uh, but to catch up with the competition, to keep the pace with what's already happening. And this is a very, uh, uh, you know, I could say risk-free approach because, you know, you already, 
you will commercialize something that already works somewhere, that somebody has already tried. People have their fingers burnt already somewhere with, this, with these ideas. So, uh, and you know, the conclusion is, if you want to run a, a company that uh, is following the competitors, if, if this is your business model, and for many Polish companies, this is the business model, whether they admit it or not, uh, these people don't need contacts with academia, right? They don't need any risky ideas from, uh, from universities. So they're happy with, you know, whatever they can find and uh, 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 apply on their own. Some of them have uh, R&D resources that is committed to, uh, you know, catching up with the market. And I, I, I agree with you as, as well that the, the gap between the thinking of the um, uh, people at the university and what we are trying to achieve in industry, it's an enormous gap. And uh, uh, we, we've seen a, a, a presentation today and there was a, this picture of Death Valley. Uh, and I think this is a very good, uh, uh, describes very well. Now, how to bridge these two Death Valleys? Now, I say, if a Polish company wants to be, uh, pre if, you, if wants to have a global presence, uh, this company needs to put a little bit of risk and try to find some ideas that nobody has tried before. There is no other way. If you're going to be copying others, you will never, uh, you know, you, 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 it, it's, it will be very difficult to become a global leader in, in some areas. So, so uh, Polish companies need to take this risk. Also, the amount of money that we spend on R&D is still considerably much, much lower than the big, well-established companies, big global players. So my ideal uh, situation would be where the Polish universities would be the source of inspiration for industry. So all these uh, very risky but uh, unique ideas, the new knowledge and, and the new uh, new concepts could come from universities to, to Polish industry. And for this to happen, I think we need to, we need to have a very um, clear set of rules how we, how we do this. So we don't abuse anybody, because obviously the industry wants to get it as cheap as possible and uh, and, and by the time you know it, you know, you have the lawyers from the university sitting together, lawyers from the, from the company, and then by the time they finish with their negotiations, you know, everybody's fed up with, with the whole process. So uh, we, we need to have some sort of way of, uh, I would say, building a trust between universities and, and industry, because I very often see that there is lack of trust, both of, on the industrial side and also on the on the university side. And the only, uh, the only successful cooperation with universities I had in my career uh, were with people that I could you know, come on a, on, a, on a much higher level in terms of our, uh, uh, the cooperation. So I think that this element of trust is very important there. And my last comment is that I have also very indirect uh, uh, relationship with universities because all of our employees, all the PhD chemists that work in PCC Rokita and do the research there, all our engineers, they are people from Polish universities. They are the graduates. Uh, so, so, you know, whatever happens at, at, at Polish universities has a very big uh, impact on industry because these, these are the people who are you know, with their experience and their mindset that they come to industry, that determines also what happens there. So that's... No, th thank you very much. I, I, I'm very glad, as a, as a man from the university, that uh, you have mentioned this in the last remark, because uh, uh, when we talk in general about uh, uh, cooperation of universities or a science, uh, uh, with uh, the business, we have to remember that uh, uh, the universities provide educated or highly educated people to the society. And in fact, the aspect which we are talking about is 
so-called third mission of the universities, which has been added to the traditional mission of the university very recently. And so universities are kind of engaged into a more and more, um, I, 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 I wanted to use uh, the word duties, but not this, this is probably not the proper word, but definitely more in a sense of obligations with respect to society. On the other hand, business and industry are still keeping with the, with, uh, the main objection, which is uh, or something like, uh, sorry for, for, for being very trivial, for profit. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so we have to remember about different aspects of both parties, right? And therefore, a trust, which you mentioned, is indeed uh, very, very, very essential. Uh, now, uh, uh, let, me, let me ask the uh, audience with actually the same question. Maybe you have some idea how one should answer this question, what are the main barriers or uh, the obstacles in the successful cooperation between business and, uh, and, and uh, science? Uh, let's say research. Um, would you contribute to this? Yes, please, over there. Could you introduce yourself? Hello. Yes. Uh, I'm just a private person who worked several years abroad. I have returned to Poland. And I think the actual economic model of uh, collaboration between uh, Polish uh, science and uh, general startups and, and, and companies uh, is uh, lacking uh, the following uh, uh, feedback that is uh, making uh, collaboration sometimes completely impossible. Imagine the following scenario if somebody is creating, let's say, be it a startup or anything, and then if somebody is implementing, I have several examples is implementing uh, some novel uh, technology, be it con con related to drones. It's related to drone business. You have something that works, makes photo, makes maps. Uh, it's uh, quite popular today. Uh, I have started in this business eight years ago. And we have the following scheme that has been followed by Polish Institute of Aviation, uh, AGH, I mean, University of Mining and uh, Metallurgy. It was one of the startups by Professor Uchlu, who was is here. And then uh, it, the, the same problem has been uh, repeated by uh, University of Wrocław Department of uh, Geodesy. Uh, same story about uh, anybody uh, concerning drones. Uh, you, have, you can create, you can uh, deliver your, uh, a company that is potentially already making on demand uh, uh, let's be it maps or, or making uh, autopilots. And then always somebody in the university pops up, uses exactly this idea, uh, announces it is a, a PhD thesis, whatever it is. He amasses a, a lot of, of uh, grants, but it doesn't matter. So let's say oh, they are replicating, maybe they will find something better than the actual state of things. But then you are following them closely, and they are buying ready-made competitive product from abroad, usually from, from outside of the European Union. Then they are transferring uh, something like 10 millions, and they have ready product, imitating the same behavior as the company they have observed, sometimes from local specialist press. Uh, and uh, they can easily survive claiming that they are doing research. And there's no way to make a feedback. Let's, let's talk about uh, a scale of things. It sometimes concerns uh, something like uh, 5 million uh, euros. Uh, let's talk about stratospheric project in Institute of Aviation uh, that uh, officially ended three years uh, ago. Uh, so let's say they have bought an autopilot that can uh, proper Canadian, but it doesn't matter. It was distributed also by the company, by uh, uh, Mr. Uhl, but it doesn't matter either. The limit of, uh, of, the, of the autopilot pilot that is the most important component of any drone, because the, any design of autopilot for a drone requires a dozens of prototypes, and if something crashes, it's, it's, it's over. So the, the max ceiling to go with this was a few kilometers. 
because it was designed for drones that fly low in the atmosphere. Now, somebody is making a research, you can uh, uh, write to them, you can complain, you can complain even to European anti fraud office, and still a closed source of person will be continuing this research without producing anything, and then they make a next grant in which they, came, they, they claim they will be making photos using stratospheric drone. That was never created. And this grant is still following on. Now, we have no feedback in a situation when somebody creates something, it works to certain limits, and somebody claims something bigger yeah. and delivers nothing. Okay. And it's total lot of feedback. And it's totally depressing to the <laughs> point that at this moment, I, since five years, I'm an uh, inventory picker at Amazon, and I don't care to support you anymore. But the problem is, whoever starts anything <laughs> will meet any situation. What? We, we have to remember those people got the, the, the prizes for the most innovative projects. And we are talking about projects in three university of technology in Poland and the most renowned Polish Institute of Aviation. This is going like a cancer, and to date, Poland, not a single higher institution has developed fully tested autopilot for drones. Now, and Perhaps we now, can try so to, to give the problem. voice to the panelists so they yeah. can yeah. answer the question. Yeah, yeah. And I think you should address it first. I, I'm, I'm still the, waiting for a conclusion, uh, you know. No, no. But, yes, I understood you correctly. You have mostly talked about what we are doing wrong in this country. Okay, but, but generally, what is wrong? But I was, I, I was really uh, uh, expecting that you finally will say what to do to be better. And this is the main question of this panel. How to do it? Two, okay. two, two, Dr. Two, two, fair, two, two fair points from, from this uh, uh, um, uh, uh, case study that we have just been presented. Well, one point is that at the moment, nobody expects um, any commercialization from university work. You know, they, the, the universities are expected to publish papers, you know, do PhD, uh, th write PhD Not theses. Quite correct. But so, but no, but that's, that's, the, that's the daily routine of, of university. You know, I w I, I'd love to see that uh, universities also held, uh, also held accountable one way or another uh, you know, for the re results of their work in terms of uh, uh, commer commercialization somewhere down the line. So I think that's, that, that would be uh, also um, uh, one stimulus, apart from those stimuli that you've mentioned, like, you know, uh, participation in the startups, uh, um, receiving some, some money, even money from uh, I know this is changing in Polish universities. The IP situation is changing, the ownership of the patents, there are some new, there's some new legislation that has been passed, but putting a, a little bit more, uh, well, putting more uh, emphasis on uh, commercialization of the uh, research results, I think that would be, that would be one, uh, one solution. No, I, I don't quite agree with the statement that uh, nobody expects a commercialization from university uh, activities. No, not quite. But uh, one should remember that this cannot be the main activity and the main uh, measure of the value of activities or whatever for universities, right? Uh, we have already agreed that university is a different mission as well. Uh, so, uh, so just a little bit, uh, we should share the responsibility between different parties and the fact that such institution or center as EIT Plus has been created. It's a clear example that uh, universities are not the only institutions where we believe that some progress can be made in this way of commercialization, and I think we all agree about that. But yes, that's a many-dimensional problem, yes. But um, would you please contribute more to this? Yes, 
over there. Grzegorz Liśkiewicz, Łódź University of Technology. Uh, you said about trust, and I agree on that. So I think what we would need is uh, introduce more programs that would force both sides to get a bit closer to each other. So this could be, for example, some programs for industrial PhDs, which in my opinion is the best link possible. Uh, centers for doctoral trainings, which could be co-conducted by university and a company to, to, to make PhD students work ha half at the industry and half at the university. Also, create some programs that would attract universities to bring uh, people from industry to conduct classes at the universities. And this kind of little things, because we're still on both sides of this Death Valley and little programs, which do not cost that much, would be, contribute to long-time relationships. Industrial PhD, excellent idea. I think something that rarely happens in Poland. Uh... Yes, uh, uh, well, thanks for this uh, contribution. I think that generally idea, uh, the idea is not uh, very new, but the problem is that not many people want to introduce in. Just for example, you mentioned about uh, professors who uh, spend some time in industry and um, at the university. Or in other words, they will teach at the universities with some industrial experience. This is the problem. If you talk with the professors, and Professor Uchlp can, can uh, tell about this a little bit, probably from his experience, it's, it's just a problem of uh, state of mind, I think. There is no, that, I, I don't think any problems in the sense of organization, but there's a state of mind. I think if I understood correctly, the, the gentleman that he was saying is maybe introduce industry experts, people who work in the industry, and come to teach a class or a course in the university. We do it quite a lot in Israel from different industries. We also teach entrepreneurship because we want to encourage the PhD students to start a startup, not just go work for, for the medium, big size companies, because this is an engine for innovation. However, what I am thinking is that at this time, it will be a little bit fight. Academician will not give so easily didactic hours to such people. So it should be, it should be some kind of discount. Discount, you don't need to make full uh, your 210 or 270, it should be some discount because we are inviting some uh, people from the street. It's very profitable, but it should be not this fight for didactic hours. It should be more fluent, more flexible. Yeah. I, uh, I can tell you one example which a little bit reflects this. Um, I'm uh, responsible for so-called Wrocław Academic Hub. It's a small initiative established by the mayor of the city of Wrocław. And within the activity of the Wrocław Academic Hub, there is a program called Mozart. Now it's a fifth edition of this program. What the program is about? It's very simple. We try to combine, manage two people, one from business, let's say industry, and one from academia. And the municipality of Wrocław is paying four to five thousand zlotych to scientists who is willing to work on a particular well-defined problem in industry. Every edition, there are 20 to 30 such, let's say, teams working together. And after every edition, we summarize this. And what happened? In 99%, it creates new jobs. It increases profits for the companies, sometimes simply by solving rather not very difficult problems. And colleagues from universities are obliged to bring to the university suggestions how 
how to uh, modify curricula for students on the in the departments. This is all what we expect. And every of such, uh, such say, projects lasts for one year. And we, as I said, it's a fifth edition. And we are still believe that instead of municipality, that the business will start to pay. We are waiting. As I said, it's a fifth edition, still paid by the municipality. Industry is happy with the results, but not willing to continue this project. That's a symptomatic, isn't it? Well, I, I wanted to give you a good example, not a bad example, so don't be, don't, don't be sad. <laughs> uh, could, you, could you contribute to this discussion more? Uh, sometimes sometimes um, uh, in, uh, in this di difficult problem of cooperation between science, research, and industry, people underline something which I will say a different time scale for, for a researcher, for university. It has been already mentioned by, I think, Professor Uhl showed that uh, at universities, uh, Time is running slow, let's say. And our colleagues, scientists, researchers, would like to spend their whole life on research. But in industry, time is going fast because industry business is in a constant competition and it has no time to wait for. Do you think that this substantial time scale of both parties, which we talk about. Is it the main barrier, or is it a one of the main barriers for the successful collaboration? I ask you the question. What do you think, please? It's true the time scale for scientists is different than for business. Business wants to earn money. It was told this uh, bag of dollars must grow quickly. And scientists are looking for impact factor, as, as someone was telling. So business are looking for impact. What is impact for products? How to produce them? I would like to maybe mention one problem. It was not told. Finally, scientists have some uh, knowledge, has patented something. After he wants to ma make some private company, how to evaluate patent? Because patent is not his own. It is for university. How to evaluate value of patent? How much it is value? Did someone is doing it correctly in Poland? Because the people, we have, some of you, you have a lot of patents. Someone would like to buy patents, but how to evaluate this patent? Knowledge of scientists. But does the scientist get, or the researcher gets anything from the technology he licensed? Yeah, I don't have experience. I don't know. Finally, how it, because it is because the patent it, belongs to the university. It is not your own. Yeah, because in Israel, what we do is just in your country. In Israel, you're right. The patent belongs to the university. The university transfer it or license it to the private company. But then still, the researcher gets shares and equity in the private company. He himself, not only the TTO. This is the. This is the solution, I think, to get the researcher more incentive to do short-time research, to do market application. Oh, isn't it that, uh, well, uh, I, I'm not expert in this, in the patents area. I have no patents on my, uh, nevertheless, I, I think that uh, the, the value of patent uh, should be measured by uh, by the license, right? I mean, as long as the patent is on the paper, uh, I, I, I don't want to say it's useless, but... With, with patents, it's a little bit like with property, right? It's worth as many as people are yeah, that's, willing to pay for it. I mean, that, you can... You can that's what I meant, yes. There yes. are techniques of evaluating uh, uh, 
potential value of the patent, but at the end of the day, you know, that, 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 the patent is worth as much as somebody is willing to pay for it at this particular time. And then, you know, as, as time progresses, then uh, more things become obvious and some more, you know, potential... That's a license, right? Exactly, exactly. I, I just wanted to come back to this two different scales, time scales, that allegedly the universities and the companies work uh, on. I, I wanted to add another dimension to, to the time scale. I think it's the complexity of the problem because very often, uh, you know, there are some problems that industries have not been able to solve for years now. So, you know, we also have our, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we also have our dead bodies in, in uh, uh, hidden somewhere, and that's been over there for <laughs> many years. So, I, I think it's, I, I don't, I don't think that this is a big uh, problem. Uh, if, because the, the problems that uh, can be solved in three, four months, we tend to solve, solve ourselves, and uh, only, only the bigger ones, this is where we uh, look for help from outside. Oh, yes, Professor Wool. Would you, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't, Thank you very much. You ask uh, how much is value your patent. That <laughs> is so much if you have a customer to pay. That's what does. If, that... if you have no customer, this is zero. If you have customer, big company, they need to pay one million, it's a one million. I have in my portfolio 62 patents, but one patent is uh, has a value because they are paying me every year the money because they are producing something based on the, of the money. This is the answer, in my opinion. But uh, you ask, that's how to make the commercialization at the university. In my opinion, your university is a wrong place for commercialization. University is a place to make research, to make education, not to make commercialization. In my opinion, we, we will be successful in commercialization. We will move the people with the idea to industry. The people who want to go to industry to make the business. This is the idea, not to, uh, to, to push the people at the university to make the commercialization. It's not a successful way to make uh, some products, new technology, and so on. I have such experience. I, I can give uh, a few I, examples of technologies in Israel we, that were originated in universities that are now uh, you know, common, common products in the marketplace, and they were licensed. They co were commercialized by universities. Uh, I don't know if you know of the, the pill that you swallow, and, uh, and there's a camera to you know, see all your digestive system. This was invented by a university. It's a shame. Even uh, genetic uh, sequences, without it, none of the drug companies would be able to provide commercial drugs. It's okay. a shame not to use the know-how. But in my opinion, what I know, all these products, which was a result of the research at the university, were commercialized in Israel by the startups. I know many, many startups. I have many colleagues in Israel. They build the big company. For instance, this mobile, uh, mobile eye company, which now is a leader on the application of the vision system for automotive industry. This is a milliard company uh, in United States, but it was bought from two professors in Israel by $140 million dollars. <laughs> uh, three years after starting up so, the company, but it was a startup. It was a, not a commercial product of the university. You right. There are many, many uh, examples of that. And I, I know I, many companies, I cooperate with yeah. them that I know. It may be a terminology issue, because when we talk about commercialization, it's taking the early stage technology into the startup or into the industry? No, I... Not directly at the laboratory at the university, but also from literature we know the best startups which are created in technology are created by students. 
because they are engaged 100% in, in working for this startup. But the researchers, they have also the second way to back to the laboratory. Okay. They not engage in the 100%. Thank you. Now, I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this uh, again, that commercialization is not to be expected at universities. I only, I'm a little bit more jealous and this is a remark to the audience, because when I said the same as Professor Ull said, I didn't get applause. Uh, I didn't get applause from you, because, but we all agree that commercialization is not um, it, it, the main, uh, the main uh, uh, mission of the universities. Um, let, please take the floor, uh, yes. Uh, Andrzej Sikora, Vice Director of the Institute of Electric, uh, Electric Technology in Brasov. Uh, a remark to the uh, Mozart program. Uh, we applied, one of our uh, worker, uh, scientists, applied uh, together with, uh, with the institution, with, uh, with the company in Wroclaw to this project. But uh, as we uh, went through this process of, of, of filling, uh, filling the, the, uh, uh, the documents, uh, what we could see uh, that the time frame is insufficient. Maybe, maybe it would be good to scale up this uh, cooperation uh, possibilities. Because uh, one person in, in such uh, small uh, time frame uh, is unable to, to solve uh, as many yes. problems as, as the company can deliver, actually. It is a, yeah. we, we could see that it is a very good start. And, and we hope to, 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 to continue it in, in large-scale okay. projects. Yeah. But it could be also maybe able to, uh, to, to, to increase it. And uh, answering your question, it wasn't answered. Uh, indeed, uh, uh, it depends on the institution but the scientists can have benefits of, of IP uh, it, he, he developed. It, it may be from 30% up to 50%. It, it's, uh, it's shared with, with the institution. So it, it is motivating, definitely. But uh, it is uh, complicated to negotiate the moving the rights to the, uh, to the business because the institutions are not flexible uh, enough yet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you uh, now? That was the last uh, question, and now I, uh, cl before closing, I will ask my colleagues, panelists, uh, if they would like to conclude by one sentence or so. Then, would you? If not, then I, uh, and I will try to conclude. <laughs> if you, if you uh, allow me. Um, of course, it has to be at the general terms, and I think we all agree that uh, uh, the condition for successful uh, collaboration between science, research, and business is to create a friendly environment. After all, trust between parties is essential, and we have to have more of common understanding and then fully and then we will be uh, successful i wish that uh, colleagues from business side would or will organize more or less the same seminars asking them or us how to pr create this friendly environment from their side and the fact that scientists organize such a seminar is already a very good indication that there is a willingness and there is the offer to trust the other side. I wish you all who participated or participate in this seminar uh, successful years uh, and uh, I would say illumination, whatever it will be in applied or basic science. Thank you very much for contributions. Thank you.